Let's talk about tables. So tables are kind of fascinating in coding world because you have to tell the computer where the table starts and ends, where the rows start and end, and where each cell starts and ends. So the first thing that you have to tell a computer is in fact that it is going to create an actual table. The second thing you're going to specify is actually going to be the number of rows you want. So you're gonna signify a row for the table. And then you have to start splitting it into columns, or in this case, cells, so that way you can have different cells across the row. So that's when you begin to start splitting it across. What's important to know is that the structure of the table is always going to go table, row, cell. So you're always going to list the table first, open it up and close it, Inside of the table, you'll signify that you want a row to open and close. And inside of that row, you'll then begin to split into cells across the table row. So to do this, what we're going to do is go ahead and go into CodePen real quick because it's just a quick, easy way to learn about tables. So we're going to start and it's all going to be in HTML. And we're going to go ahead, actually, yeah, it's all going to be in HTML. And we're going to go ahead and create a table with some rows. So we're first going to open up a table tag. And then we're going to go ahead and close that table tag. So you've said computer, I'm going to have a table. Now, something that you can do with pretty much all of the table, or all the table tags is add attributes to say like how wide the table is going to be, if it has a border, um, if it has a certain height and width for each cell, all those things can be attributes. And remember, we always put an attribute inside the opening parent tag. So in this case, I'm going to put a border on this table equal to one. So that way you can see it once I begin to create each cell and you can see the outline of each cell. The next thing is I'm going to go inside the two table tags and I'm going to go ahead and create a table row also signified by TR and then I'm going to go ahead and close that table row. So far you can see very little has really occurred over here in our, um, our code pen and I'm going to go ahead and actually save this and I've named mine learning tables so I can remember how tables works. The next thing is we now need to signify that there is a cell, like a table data. We're creating that column. And by the drawing that column or creating that column, we're breaking that box into one cell and adding data to our table. So a cell in a table row is called a TD or a table data tag. And we're going to go ahead and close that. And you can see that the second I do that, this border is now showing and I can see that there is stuff inside here. And we can go ahead and put cell one inside of the cell and that will appear inside the table. Right now, this just looks like a border box around this table because there's only one cell. So there's only one border. If we want to add a second cell off to the right of this one, we would go inside the row we want to off put the cell in, and we list them in order from top to bottom. So with cell one, I'm then going to go ahead and hit enter after I've closed that cell, and I'm going to open up a new one, again, being another TD. And because it's listed second, you'll see it's listed off to the right over here, and I can then put cell two here, and it will be the second cell in the table. And you can see the border is occurring around all, both of these cells. So I'm gonna go ahead and save, and at this point you've learned that we have a table, we have table rows inside of there, and we have table datas. But now, what if you wanna be creating something that is like this with six, or sorry, with nine separate cells on it? Or what if you wanted to have one where like these middle cells were merged together to look like this, while the top and bottom looked like this? You have lots of different options of what you can do inside of a table, and that's where things can start getting complicated. But if you're just making a basic table where it's got the same number of cells in each row, it's very simple because all you need to do is set up your first row with the way you want it to look, like cell three here, and then I can close that table data. And if you think about it, I essentially want to replicate this entire row starting on line two down through line nine because I want three cells side by side. As long as I stay within this table tag and create another row and another one with three cells inside, 
I will get my desired effect of nine cells in a table. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy these, and then I'm gonna go down underneath the close TR after the first row is closed. I'm gonna open another one, but I'm really just gonna paste it, opening that row and closing it, and then same thing right below it, creating three table rows with three cells in each, and you can see that they are there in the coding. What I think is important is that you can do a lot of different things from this point. You can remove the entire border. So I can go up into the table and I can remove the border and it will just look like text is sitting next to each other, but it will be very consistent. So for instance, if I want the first one to be a width of let's say 200 pixels, I can go into the table data of the first one in that column. So I'm in the first row and the first cell in that column. Specify a width and because it has a width, the ones underneath it default to that same width and you can see it's now a lot wider. I can do lots of other things like specify a style with a background color and all those kinds of things if I really want to get into it. But if you're making an invisible table to hold things together, this is how you can make that table. If you only want two cells in each, you would only have two table datas in each TR or table row and so on and so forth. And that's how you can create a quick table to be able to control things inside of your page.